I often say don't buy into the hype, but when it comes to Tom King's vision, maybe you should. We're proof. Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka The Mad Dog, and we're back with another video. Written by Tom King and illustrated primarily by Gabriel Hernandez Walter, the first issue of Vision was published by Marvel Comics in November of 2015, with the twelfth and final issue being released in October of 2016. And Vision's now a family man. Despite being one of the most powerful Avengers, he just wants an ordinary life, complete with a family that he built for himself. But when one blip in the code causes a chain of events that he couldn't prevent, will Vision realise that human life has challenges that being a superhero can't solve? Looking at the art now, and if I'm being brutally honest, I know I'm going to get some backlash for saying this, but I wasn't a massive fan of the style that they had in Vision. But at the same time, I do think it was a great match for this story. What I mean by that is that I'm very unlikely to pick up a title just because of the fact that Walter's working on it. But even if somebody like Jim Lee or Ryan Otley was working on Vision, I don't think it would have matched the tone as well. And the reason why I think Walter's style suited Vision was because it was so different from what you're used to seeing in a Marvel comic. It didn't feel overly familiar for something from the big two publishers, and I loved that because it completely threw me off guard. The only sort of asterisk to that is that I do feel like it could have been a bit more refined. I was comfortable with the sort of flat look, but if you often looked into the background, characters would just be missing a face, or they'd just have eyebrows and a line of mouth and nothing else. And especially because when I think of Vision, I think of somebody who's always got clarity on situations, it seems a bit odd that that would be the case. It is softer with its line work and more pastel with its colours and works mostly in a flat 2D plane. At the start of the series, everything felt upright and at the angle that every sitcom would be filmed at. But the longer it went on and the more that the story unfolded, the perspective perspective would change. Things would be shown at an angle or a top-down view and I just love the subtlety in that. But my biggest problem is that the simplicity lacks excitement. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a story that needs excitement because it is a slow burn, almost kind of like a psychological thriller, but there are still a few scenes throughout this run where there's a fight going on and it just felt a bit lifeless. Ironic given the subject matter and if that was an intentional choice then fair play it did a great job but it just doesn't exactly help the action to jump off the page. But what I noticed the art excel at was pace. The dialogue did help with that but it knew which scenes to drag out and give more time to even if it could have just been summarised in one page. It knew when to zero in on a specific reaction and when to bring it back up in later panels. And it would often do that thing where it would reveal its importance over time and I love when a book can do that. One issue in the middle is done by Michael Walsh and admittedly I didn't notice is too much of a difference. There was enough there so that you could tell it was set during a different time period, but it didn't feel like it was a completely different comic, which is kind of what you want. I'm not saying that as a negative. For some reason though, the art overall just reminded me a lot of modern John Romita Jr. And I think that's probably the reason why I wasn't allowing myself to enjoy it that much. And yeah, that might feel like a bit of an unfair criticism, but something that people often forget is that art is subjective. Because I have read reviews where they really did enjoy this style, but for me, I reckon if this would have been an independent book, I might have been a bit more forgiving, which I know sounds completely contradictory from from some of the things that I've already said, but that's just the way I felt when I was reading it. And at first I was disappointed because I missed out on the oversized hardcover, but now that I've read it, I feel like the complete collection's just fine. I don't think seeing this in a larger format would have impacted my enjoyment of the series. But if you did want to pick up this book or any others, you can get them from the channel's sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services. And if you use code WOOF WOOF, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code WOOF WOOF SHIP IT together for 5% off your entire order order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. I don't know about anybody else, but did this entire series feel like an episode of Black Mirror? Normally with any series, it comes with a lot of acclaim. I'm really sceptical going into it because I don't want to be disappointed because it didn't live up to the hype and then all of a sudden I'm saying something just to be controversial, but when it comes to Vision... I love this. Thinking about the series overall, I just loved that it never paused the story to give a subtext, or allowed the deeper meaning to simmer or disappear when the plot began to ramp up. It was a perfect balance of both, and I think it's because it knew exactly how long it needed to be. Looking back on the title as a whole, it's difficult to see how this series could have been any shorter, and at the same time, I never felt like it was dragging, and it was great because the scenes that needed time to develop got that time and weren't rushed. It still had plenty of momentum throughout, and the end of each issue really packed a punch. This also made me really appreciate a slow burn. It doesn't always need to be action straight out of the gate, which is something that I do often praise when I'm doing a review. Time was taken to build up the premise because it had intrigue from the beginning. And where I feel like this title succeeds where other similar concepts might fail is that the intrigue really had a payoff. There was a concept and an execution rather than there just being a concept that they kind of just explain a bit more. And one thing I've never shied away from on this channel is the fact that I am a dumb reader, which has often limited the enjoyment that I can get from certain titles. I'm the guy that's just 
just reading a book to be entertained. I don't need a philosophical crisis every time I open up an issue. But because Vision's story was so intertwined with a deeper meaning, and I cared about the plot that it was telling me, it made me want to connect those dots for myself. And yeah, it might sound like I'm giving this glowing unanimous praise, but strap in because it's gonna continue because I loved Vision in this. As a guy who just wanted this normal suburban life and to settle down and wanted to ignore the bigger problems that were going on in the world, but no matter what happened, he just couldn't have that. And for a non-human character, there's just so much emotion that's conveyed in every action. The decision that he made to build a dog to try and restore normality after one of the most brutal scenes in this series, the moments where he plays with the kids or he goes to the school, and even whilst he's just talking to the neighbours felt like necessary scenes to help us build this image of who Vision is at his core and what he really desires. In another title, they might have felt like filler that are just trying to fill up pages because they've got 22 that they need to complete. But with Vision, the little moments are the story. I also enjoyed the narration going on throughout the series. Like, how often does that happen? There was just something ominous and unsettling about the way it was carrying us through the story that I think just added to the overall experience. And I enjoyed that at first it felt like it was this homage to Silver Age comics. You know, the type where the narration is so obvious it almost makes the art feel redundant. But the voice of the narration was fantastic in carrying us forward in some of those slower moments. It even gave away some spoilers in the first issue, but because it was in line with the tone, I didn't really mind. And there was one scene in particular where Vision was doing the narration and he was going through all the times that he saved Earth. I did like how I could line up some of those events, but there was just this sarcastic undertone throughout it that I just really liked. And normally I don't resonate with a family drama storyline that's going on within a superhero book. They often take away from the action and the story that I wanted to read and they're mostly just there to cause problems for the main character. But that wasn't the case with Vision and the plot was the family. I can't sit here and say that Virginia, Vin and Viv were some of my favourite characters that have ever existed, but I just became way more invested in their plot than I'd ever expect. The longer that the series went on, I was invested in those scenes that were just going on between the three of them. Seeing this family that Vision had created be able to hold a scene on their own is just something that I wouldn't have ever predicted. And I think it's an achievement on King's part that he doesn't always need to have Vision in the scene for it to be interesting. And I just loved how the family that he created was the one causing him the biggest problems, but he still needed him there for his happiness. And in an odd twist for myself, I wasn't a fan when the wider Marvel Universe characters started to appear. And I think it actually took something away from the book. Maybe it's because I'm just not a fan of the triangular looking armor that Iron Man had during this era. But when the Avengers characters started to show up, I felt like it was the equivalent of a curtain dropping during a theatre production. Because when this book started, I liked that it felt like it could be separate from everything that's going on in the Marvel Universe. How many times is it the case that there's an event going on that completely derails a great story and yes, yet again, I'm thinking about you, Matt Fraction's Iron Man, but from issue one, I felt like that possibility was completely eliminated. Sure, yeah, Vision's house was decorated with a piano from Wakanda and a gift from Captain America, but it still felt like it could be set apart from the main Marvel Universe continuity or at least play fast and loose with where it fitted in. Don't get me wrong, there was a great twist that involved the Avengers and an action scene that felt pivotal for the climax, but I found myself preferring this a lot more when it was just about Vision and his newly created family. In saying that, the Vision-related established characters that feature throughout this were a welcome addition. Grim Reaper, Victor, and that fantastic flashback issue with Scarlet Witch were major highlights for this series. That last one in particular with Scarlet Witch, I loved its placing within this run and it felt like it came at a perfect time. And at first I felt like this maybe was going to be pure flashback and just there to give us a bit of context to where Vision's head's at, but by the end it was just so bleak and haunting. I felt the emptiness as Vision reiterates that joke to Virginia, and in some ways, and I can't really put my finger on it exactly, it reminded me of the ending of The Killing Joke, but maybe that's just me. So there is a lot to love about this series, and I've probably missed out on a few of the things that I did really enjoy, but the only other things that I can think of that I want to talk about would be spoilers. Jumping into the spoilers section now, so if you don't want anything ruined, skip to the final verdict, but that end scene was difficult. I'm talking about the one before the final scene where Virginia drank from the vase and she was slowly deteriorating and her life was coming to an end. And this was just a really fitting ending to this entire story, but it was still just weird to see it unfolding, especially because of the fact that they'd introduced the vase very early on in issue one. So it was almost like Chekhov's gun that they showed it at the beginning so they knew that they had to use it at the end. And especially because of the fact that this is mostly a character study on Vision, seeing him just sit there with it and accept the fact that he couldn't save it was just so impressive that they managed to pull this off. The life that he wanted was falling apart around him and he couldn't do anything except for sit with her and just let it happen. The only thing that I do think slightly ruined this was the very final scene. I'm talking about the last page because it was implying that Vision might not be done trying to create life and I think that is a little bit of a disappointing take. Obviously he's a character that likes to see progress and he wants to see the future advance but he also kind of felt like maybe he didn't learn his lesson in the first place.
place. I don't know, don't get me wrong, if they make a sequel to this, I will gladly read it, but at the same time, it feels like it might just be a cliffhanger for the sake of it. But I do feel like it might have just been a more fitting close if they'd ended the book with the scene with Virginia dying. Which is crazy thinking about that scene and how it overshadowed the rest of the series because there was an amazing cliffhanger at the end of issue one where the Grim Reaper just burst in and he got killed and this just set off this amazing chain of events. I did not have a clue where this book was going as soon as this happened. I think it was the perfect stick of dynamite that it could have thrown in. Because before that, it was about this slow build and establishing what type of story this was going to be. But then that happened and it was like, nope, this is still going to be a bit batshit crazy. And I just loved how the book didn't let this moment go. It did become the plot. It was all of a sudden this snowball effect and everything just got caught up in it. I thought it might have just been one of those dumb scenes to show you that, yeah, the Marvel Universe does still exist here. But it was almost like Breaking Bad in a way that, oh, okay, Virginia's killed this person, so she's going to have to bury them. But then somebody found out that they did it, which is going to lead to this, and then so on and so forth. And now that I've finished the series, it's just weird thinking, how would this series have been if this moment hadn't have happened? Were they destined to always create some problem that Vision wouldn't be able to solve? But that leads me on to Leon killing CK. This was another one of those moments that I just really didn't see coming either. Who knows, maybe the narration did tell me about this one and I really wasn't paying attention. But him then blaming Virginia and it having this snowball effect on Viv, I loved everything that came from this. And when I was talking about the Scarlet Witch issue and it coming at the right time, I feel like it was after I needed a bit of a break from this. It's just crazy to me how good the pace was, and if I went back and read this again, I could probably bring up other moments in the spoiler section. But when I think back on longer series that go on for way past 12 issues, some of them don't have as many memorable moments as Vision. This is my final verdict. And my priority when reading a comic is to be entertained. I don't have a lot of spare time to read every book that's out there and I'd much rather spend my time enjoying the book that's in front of me than working hard to try and figure out what the story's about. But Tom King's The Vision, and yeah the the is there so that's why I'm going to call it that even though it doesn't really sound like it flows correctly, managed to do what many other comics couldn't by giving me an entertaining story but also a deeper level that I wanted to explore. I also get the feeling that the older that I get and the more of life that I experience I will end up getting more out of this book because it's a fantastic exploration about the pressures of life and how autonomous our days can become and also just about how the thing that we desire most can also bring us the greatest misery. I do wish that the art was more to my liking, that was my biggest hurdle with this title, but again, that's just personal preference. And I do think it would have benefited from setting itself apart from the Marvel Universe that was going on whilst this was being released, because this does feel like a story that could be remembered for decades to come, so it's a shame that it has to date itself. However, and with me taking a more positive approach to the books that I review, I thoroughly enjoyed Vision and I'd definitely recommend it to anybody who wants something a bit different from the regular output coming from Marvel or DC. Maybe I'm being too generous but when I weigh everything up and I think about the experience that I had with this book, I'm going to give this a very high score of 90%. Woof woof! So that's the video, hopefully you enjoyed it but until next time just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof! See you at the next video.